Hey, Joe Buckley. What, Ted? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's yes. Yes, Ted. Yes. I am Mr. Director this time, Joe. You oh. are treat me as such. Okay, give me I... another chance. Give me another chance, please. <laughs> you are an extra, and I will immediately fire you if you don't. I'm going to pour hot coffee on your head, Joe. Okay, I understand. I'm an extra in your video game world. You're the main character. I understand. I'm sorry. So let me tell you about the Super Mario Brothers movie, The Legend of the Seven Scripts. Oh, I thought you were going to say, hey, Joe, again. <laughs> I think I was going to say, what's that, no. fat? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, uh, I, I am emulating uh, the directors of the Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh. Uh, Morton Jenkel and Annabelle. Fuck. I fr- Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jenkel. There we go. Oh. I was blanking on their names. I've only written it down fucking 15 times. Well, no, you've got like a you've got like a whole tome there. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like a little like Bible for the Mario Brothers. Yep, yep, yep. The Mario Bible. Mm. Uh, so the Super Mario Brothers movie. Um, me and Joe, and John from Sip Boys. Uh, we, uh, well, like fucking four weeks ago, five weeks ago now. Oh yeah, many was, many moons ago. <laughs> it was it was a fortnight ago. <gasps> and <Yeah>. um... <laughs> Squid Games. <laughs> I'm ready for Squid Games. <laughs> We, we we did like a mystery science theater thing. I'm gonna upload that alongside this. I just want you to know that was uh, it was satire. It was tomfoolery. It was kfob, and we say a lot of falsehoods and lies in it. It's not entirely. It's definitely not true. We did not get absolutely show wasted on mushrooms and take three hours to watch a two hour long movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We definitely did not. Get up several times during it for me to move my furniture and try to do home care while under mushrooms. Mm-hmm. I, I think I might have said something about how you should like plant like a pipe bomb in the like the middle of the city so it goes off and hits as many people as possible. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I mean that was just a it was joking. I was just joking around a little. Yeah, we were having fun here. Yeah. So uh, the Super Mario Bros. movie is like an infamously uh, bad video game movie. It kind of killed the idea of doing a video game movie for. <laughs> fucking years yeah until made nintendo like uh go into their little shell their little koopa shell yeah nintendo has refused to do anything uh movie wise with mario or any other properties for years joe you were telling me that studio ghibli tried to do a zelda movie and nintendo was like nah go fuck yourself yeah yeah i heard that at some point yeah uh, but I mean, but the wizard went so well for them. I don't know why they would let one <laughs> Super Mario Bros. size disaster impact them. So uh, Mario Bros. movie came out in '93. Before that, uh, in '86, which I forget when Mario Bros. came out, it was somewhere around that. Uh, nobody actually knows. Nobody knows the release date of that video game in America. Nobody knows the exact date the, of the original or Super Mario. Super Mario Bros. Yep. Um. Because there were, there were like, yeah, literal yeah, arcade yeah. machines of it. I've never seen one. It's, it's on the Atari. It's <laughs> all shitty. It's on the 2600. So in 86, there was an anime that was only in Japan. That was, like, Mario and Luigi, and they go on an adventure, and they have, like, a cartoon dog. It's very weird. It looks like Astro Boy. It actually, uh, it really inspired Akira. Really? The, oh, yeah, yeah. I read... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Bet, yeah. You read the... Yeah, you bet? Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can you give me a source on that? My ass. <laughs> Joe Buckley, film critic. <laughs> I uh, write for RogerEbert.com sometimes. I go in the comment section. And just write, ha ha, you died of throat cancer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, look, 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 I guess you're fattening it up in, in hell right now, aren't you, Ebert? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um, so The Wizard, that was in 89. That was just, that was the, the Power Glove movie. Yeah, it's so bad. Just people, just jerking off Nintendo, mm-hmm. showing yeah, off Mario I think 3. 20, 25 minutes of Mario 3, yeah. It was just a big commercial. Hell yeah. How do you even do, uh, I was going to say, how do you do competitive Mario 3, but didn't they like speed run the levels or something? Yeah, it was basically like uh, the kids were getting their very first taste of Mario 3 before anyone else. So it was a truly, it was a truly fair competition of who the best gaming kid is. Wow. Because they're both playing a game they've never seen before. Uh, the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, that was a live action one with Captain Lou Albano. And the one who goes, hey, fuck you, Luigi. Yeah, I've never seen it. He's the one that does the the suit, do the Mario, and then he stumbles. I've seen the Mario. He stumbles at the end, and they just they didn't. They're like, "Fuck it, we got, we don't need another shot. Fuck mm-hmm. this." It's gonna cut into lunch if you do it again, <laughs> and he, he ain't doing nothing with that. <laughs> uh, ninety nine, or no, not ninety nine. Uh, Nineteen ninety, the Mario Bros. Three cartoon came out, and I only I've only seen one episode of it, and that is the sneaky flying, lying, cheating Ninja Koopas because it came in a box of cereal. 
with the Garfield cartoon on the same <gasps> DVD. Oh, that's a treasure if you can find that disc. And then 91, they had Super Mario World with everyone's favorite characters, Oogtar and Mama Luigi. I remember Mama Luigi fondly. I am fondly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come here, Mama Luigi. <laughs> fondly. It's <laughs> awful. Baby Joe, watch Mama Luigi. Oh. Mama Luigi, give me your breast milk. Oh, oh, I ain't gonna oh. fucking punch you. Stop it. No, no, no. That's, a, that's the greatest character ever made. <laughs> God, you know, I'm going to push you down a pit. You're going to fall for hours. Okay. Oh, yeah, that probably is what happens. We should make, like, a sketch. We should make an animated sketch about, like, what happens when Mario falls down the pit. Dude, that'd and be so... You know be even funnier? If the mushrooms were drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what if Mario swore? What if um, what if Mario's mother, like, said, like, no, you can't go save the princess, and then he, he spat in her face, and he said, fuck you, Mom. Dude, that'd be so epic. Yeah. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> so the Mario Bros. movie came out in 93, and it was the first movie based on a video game, right? Unless you count uh, War Games, which is based on a fake video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, for those who don't know, it's a weird, gritty sci-fi Blade Runner Mario Bros. that no one asked for. No one was like, man, I sure wish they had a Mario Bros. movie where Mario like doesn't want, there's no princess to save. And Bowser looks like Dennis Hopper. Yeah. I sure wish that there was real ass dinosaurs in Mario. They're only in one fucking game. There should have been there should have been like a ROM hack to make like Dennis Hopper the very last like villain. I bet there is. Yeah, there's gotta be. So people call this the worst video game movie ever, but I think mm -hmm. that's kinda unwarranted. There's so many shitty ones. Uh, Yui Bull has made like ten of them himself. I saw the postal movie. You ever seen that? People say that one's okay. Yeah, it opens up Bowl, with uh, yeah. It was like 2004. It opens up with terrorists hijacking a plane and then calling Osama bin Laden to like discuss how many virgins they're going to get in heaven. And mm. then they decide to take the plane to drive to the Bahamas. Yeah. And then people break in and they crash into the towers. It's oh, 2004. Okay. Well, hey, I mean, time heals all wounds. That's why I always say you got to make them laugh. Comedy is subjective. <laughs> so even when I was little, I remember renting this movie from Video Update. Uh, which is the local rental place, and then there was one, another one across the street that was called. Uh, they have they have one in Streeter still. Uh, you know the Streeter. one. It's, it's like green. They sell CBD now. No, no, no. Family Video's dead forever. They shut yeah. that all down. There's no more Family Videos. Yeah, now world. it's a Domino's. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I remember I would rent it from there, and I watched it. I'm like, I watched it on VHS, and I was like, you know what? This isn't that bad. This is weird. I but... love the Mario Bros. movie. <laughs> I love the Goombas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want I want my own Yoshi dinosaur. But I mean, I'm looking at it now and I'm like, this is an enjoyable and fun movie, especially the work print that me and Joe watched, which is what the movie was before they cut it down to 90 minutes to get people in and out of the theater as much as possible. Um, but I'm not an eight year old, right? Mm -hmm. this, I'm speaking of, from 2021, not 1994. You know, going in to see this movie. So uh, this movie is legendary for how shittily the production went. Uh, people were stabbed, burned, electrocuted. Mario had his hand broken by the plumbing van. Uh, the crew would get plastered daily. Which, well, that, that's pretty normal. That, that, I can tell you from experience. <laughs> it's probably how... Well, actually, it is how Mario broke his hand. Luigi slammed on the brakes on the van and fucking smashed right into his hand. Yeah. I thought that nasty Bowser did it, maybe. No, no, no. He had to sit in mud for his crimes. Okay. Dennis Hopper is not happy about the mud. <laughs> yeah, I know. It sickens him. Uh, the directors were really high-strung and overbearing. The final script was literally changing on a daily basis, and the directors, writers, and editors were forbidden from talking to each other. Yeah. Well, that's good. Whenever you have, like, a like a high school, like, click on your film set. Like, kind of like a... Uh, just like keep away, keep away from the ginger kids. Like they're they're camera crew, they're ginger. Keep away from them. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, my sources for this one, uh, there's a website that's uh, smbmovie.com mm. where it's a bunch of people that are really into the Mario Bros. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they uh, they credit the only failings of the movie uh, to being that it came out uh, like two weeks before Jurassic Park. And that people wanted a normal Mario Bros. movie as if that's some kind of crime and not what they expected. Yeah. Well, I got all my information sourced from HotMario.com. It's a little Mama. bit of a different website. I got mine from Mama Luigi's. <laughs> Mama, 
St- I will fucking unchoke you. <laughs> so it was produced by Light Motive and uh, Allied Filmmakers. They uh, they were some fucking fancy people. They did um, James and the Giant Peach, uh, Thief and the Cobbler, another movie that definitely yeah. made a lot of money. <laughs> um, they well, were, no, that's another movie that got fucked with for 20 years. Yep, it never came out. Uh, they were co-owned by the guy who did The Killing Fields. I don't know if you know that movie. Yeah. And uh, the producer of Dances with Wolves. Oh, okay. So, like, these are these are big, big fucking deal people. Uh, it was distrib- uh, distributed by Disney. Yeah. And that was a big factor in how this got all fucked up. They did it through Hollywood Pictures or Buena Vista. Yeah, yeah, that's one of theirs. And uh, that's, like, their adult film stuff that they put out. Not adult film, mm. but... They did, uh, they own uh, Pulp Fiction. Disney put out Pulp Fiction. Oh, wow. Yep. Uh, so the final version of this was directed by Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jenkel. A director couple, it's always good when you have two directors, especially later on when they don't agree with each other or talk yeah, to each yeah. other. Let me tell you, if your name ain't Ethan Cohen and Joel Cohen, you don't want to be doing that. It cost them $48 million, which is $100 million now, and they made 50% of that. Yeah. Uh, they say they, you want to make double. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, don't, they made a quarter of that. Uh, so the first script, right? There's seven scripts. The first one, it had this guy, Greg Beeman, directing, right? Uh, and it's written by two guys who never show up again. So the original script is written by these dudes, and they just fuck off. They're never seen again. Yeah, but that means they still get a check every week. Residuals. Well, yeah, the actor who played Toad. Uh, he copyrighted the song that he played, and he gets, like, a check every month for, like, six bucks. Yeah, yeah. Because it'll play in the Disney Channel. Ooh. So, uh, 1991. Movie comes out in 93. 91, the first of the seven scripts start. It's written by the people who wrote the live-action Flintstones. Mm. If, did you ever see that? No, no. It's got <laughs> it's got Kyle MacLachlan in it. I liked it. Twin Peaks. Like, I thought it was a fun movie. It feels, I can understand why these guys are doing it, because it's got that same kind of feel to it, like a live-action version of a cartoon, right? I only remember the very end where he was bowling, and he bowled on the volcano. Oh, okay. See, I didn't, well, I didn't want to have a yabba dabba do da time as a kid. <laughs> it didn't appeal to me. He had to yabba dabba do it to him. Yeah. But uh, they wrote the movie as like a Princess Bride-style satire on fantasy movies, like Shrek, you know, 10 years before Shrek. Uh, this was drafted and finished before talking to Nintendo, and it cost $10 million to get everyone attached to this script and start building the sets and doing all the pre-production stuff that would all just get thrown away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you might as well just... You know, at a film set, we have like these big dumpsters. Yeah. yeah. So you just throw it all in there. <laughs> That's where they threw away most of the, uh, the shit after this movie because they were so sick of it. Yeah. Um. So this is the closest script to the actual games. The idea behind it was um, uh, doing something that was like bringing a cartoon to life, right? They were going to um, make it look visually as cartoony as they could, but still have everything live action. Um, So, but in this, uh, so Koopa is a scaly half dragon man. Like he's actually scaled up and prosthetics and stuff. Mario is a surly, greedy miser. That's oh, a lot he's like, like Wario. Yeah, he's a lot more like Wario than anything. Like, he's really shifty. Mm. Uh, he eats Lu- onions. Yeah. Uh, Luigi is about the same as we see him in the final movie. He never really changes. He's always like the younger brother that's like, hey, I'm kind of spiritual and like a little bit, I'm not as uptight as my brother Mario. Uh, he used to have a mustache. He doesn't have any more. In the storyboard art, for later scripts, they look like gay leather cops. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think the kids like that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Toad is in it, and he's a three-foot-tall mushroom man. Uh, there's, like, tanuki leaves, coin boxes, real Goombas. Okay, yeah, they would have had to hire, like, uh, Vern Troyer. Yeah, they would have yeah. had to do something like that. But it, it's, like, direct, like, one-to-one game stuff. Like, there's a beanstalk and, like, a giant albino Monty Mole. Because all they had was Mario 1, 2... And uh, three, which Mario two is, uh, it's actually in Japan known as Doki Doki Panic. I've never heard that before. That's wild. Yeah, that's really that crazy. Cool? Yep. Uh, so the storyline. I only like uh, All Night Nippon Mario Bros. <laughs> that's, where, that's where it's a yeah, it's like a thing Nintendo put out as a radio contest, and like it's uh, some shitty radio show over there, and they put they put the guys' faces on the Goombas. And then is it like take place at night? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's also okay. a night themed. That's kind of fun. Yep. So, uh, Mario and Luigi are brothers working as plumbers, if you can believe that. Uh, he's, a, you know, Mario's grumpy, greedy business guy. 
and he's reluctantly taking care of his little brother Luigi because he promised his dying mother that he would. Yeah, Luigi, he hasn't quite grown out yet. He's still, <laughs> he's a burden on society, it, people say. Yeah, he calls him a burden and that yeah. his life would be better without him. This is fucking Mario, mm-hmm. what a dick. People say he stays inside his room all day downloading movies. And smoking marijuana and <laughs> masturbating to pornography. And he should go get a job or out shoot of, himself in the head. Out of all of those, I dislike that you put quotes over pornography the most. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Mario's having a hard time making ends meet, right? Okay. Uh, his rough demeanor is explained partially halfway into the script because his fiance left him for the wedding caterer three nights before they got married. Well, in her defense, <laughs> she might have had a sweet tooth. Oh. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, it's going to be real sweet that wedding night. Mm. <laughs> uh, Luigi has his own love interest in a lady named Hilda. Burno. <laughs> uh, Hildy. Uh, she works at a flower shop. He's too unsure of himself to tell her how he feels, and Mario doesn't really give a shit. I want to date the big blooper. (laughs) Uh, Bloober is in this. Mm. Yep, blooper. Not blooper, blooper. Oh, okay. No, no, I'm thinking of the fish. I want to fuck a big fish. Yeah, blooper. But it's a blooper. I I read the manual. (laughs) They got beaks. Yeah. Uh, Hildy's an orphan whose parents left her at a nunnery, and that's all she gets to do. She gets kidnapped and spends the rest of the movie in an ivory tower eating chocolates that make her fall in love with Koopa. Mm -hmm. Typical lady. Sitting around, eating chocolates, getting (laughs) fat. So Mario's money problems cause him to borrow cash to pay the rent. Okay. And he ends up owing money to the mafia. Oh, okay. So he sells Luigi as a sex slave. (laughs) So he tries to find work through the city, but it's all a bunch of slimy, corrupt business people that are asking him for bribes, right? Yeah. He refuses to pay off the city engineer and throws his golf equipment out the window. There's a lot of golf in these movies. I think the only other Mario that come out was like Mario Golf. I don't think Mario Kart came out yet. No, Mario Golf was not out. No way. That was on the NES. They had golf and it had Mario in it. But it's not called Mario Golf. There is a Mario Golf in the 64. Oh, whatever. That wasn't technically Mario. Super that was, Mario Kart Joseph. That wasn't technically Mario in the in NES Golf. That's Mr. That's Mr. Golf. <laughs> Everybody knows that's Mr. Golf. <laughs> you know, in Japan, Mario Golf was called uh, Doki Doki Golf Panic. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was called Unit 731. <laughs> so... Uh, Mario throws his shit out the window, right? His ostrich skin stuff. Uh, Luigi then tells Mario, he's like sitting there at the porch, he's telling this story to all these kids, uh, the Arabian Nights story about the genie. Oh, you gotta rub the lamp. Yeah, where he's like, he like tricks the genie into like, like the genie comes out and he's like, I'm gonna fuck your shit up. And then the guy tells the genie to get into the lamp because he doesn't believe he can fit in there. And then he seals it and throws it back in the water for someone else to deal with. Oh, okay. And then uh, he tells, he tries to cheer up Mario. He's like, hey, I, I got us a job cleaning the pipes of a local church. Mario was very unhappy when he finds out it's a charity job. Mm-hmm. I ain't doing nothing for nobody. Mario whips a wrench at Luigi's head when he gives $10 to a bum on the street. Yeah. Luigi ducks just in time and he breaks the back window of the Mario Bros van. Oh, Mario, why would you do that? Uh, then they uh, they go to the church with their broken window, and in the church pipes they find a mysterious bejeweled necklace. Okay. Luigi fa- sees Luigi saw this in a dream, and he knows it belongs to Hildy, because that they just wanted to take that shortcut. Like fuck it, we're, we're moving, we're moving. We want to see the mm-hmm. Mushroom Kingdom in like ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, see, though, it would have been better if like in the pipes they find like some fungus growing. They eat it, right? And then they just they grow really big and they start like kicking all the pews and stuff. That would be that pretty been cool. A good, good movie. So, uh, he, uh, he saw that in a dream and he knows that it's Hildy's necklace. He takes it with him and goes to meet her for a dinner date that they scheduled earlier. Uh, Hildy cancels it because a man named Koopa has arrived to take her to meet her estranged father that she's never met. He says that he's a private detective and that he's found, you know, found her at the request of her father. Luigi sl- thinks it's fucking weird because he offers Koopa, like, a, a slice of mushroom pizza and he, he's allergic to it, and then he sneezes fire in, like, a comedic, like, oh, wacky thing. It's almost like the mask. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he doesn't trust her, so he uh, he follows him to this weird diner. 
with a giant green pipe in it and all these mushroom themed menus. Are they going to go in that? Well, we'll find out. Okay. So, meanwhile, Mario tries to pay off Big Eddie and the Mafia with the necklace, but Luigi swapped it with a rock. So, Super Mario is running through the streets of Brooklyn from the Mafia, shouting, If I don't come up with some cash real soon, I could say Arriva Derchi to my kneecaps. Yeah. Everybody knows the kids like it when Mario was almost killed. <laughs> so Mario finds Luigi and is about to crack his fucking skull open with a wrench. Yeah. But they both get sucked into the pipe after Hildy. He's got to put down his dumb, naive, <laughs> yeah. kind brother. Like how, yeah, like the end of uh, Where yeah, the Rabbits of Mice are. And yeah. Men. <laughs> the end of Where the Rabbits are. Yeah. Where's that Where Rabbits? I read that book. Uh, so after that, it's a pretty typical fantasy movie. Uh, they arrive and there's like a Mario 3 battleship. They fight some weird hammer bros and shirtless, muscular, bearded men mm. that are supposed to be toads that ride horses called Yarly. That's not in the game. <laughs> nope, I'm going to say right now, that's not canon, that's not in the game. But uh, Toad is in there, he finds them, right? And he's like, I'm going to take you guys to Koopa Castle. At one point in the movie, the three of them are in a dungeon and Mario kills a thwomp with a basketball-sized bomb on them. Uh, they get separated when the cast- when like the, the dungeon collapses and Mario is saved by a baby brontosaurus with a 12-foot tongue called Junior. That's gotta be Yoshi. I think that's Yoshi. No, it's Junior, and it's a brontosaurus, I guess. I don't know. I guess that's easier to model. Hmm. Yeah, I so, don't know. I, maybe they had, like, uh, maybe they were, maybe they had, like, an intern in while Jurassic Park was being made, and they had, like, one of the models. That very well, it could be a He-Man thing, where it's just like, yeah, we have this dinosaur. We can use this. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Mario confides in his stupid, rideable baby Prontosaurus that, quote, I've killed Luigi Jr. Because <laughs> uh, you know, he caused a collapse. And it's supposed to be this emotional moment that turns Mario into like a villain yeah. wanting to save his like brother. like a Breaking Bad Walter White. It's just fucking dumb. He's riding this stupid. Just picture Mario riding a baby Brontosaurus like a horse. It's yeah. fucking dumb. Well, picture him like riding like one of those like dinosaur like carnival rides. Maybe that's probably what it, looked, what it looked like in the movie. So uh, the script's all over the goddamn place. Uh, some of my favorite bits. Um, this is this is one to one from the script. Uh, Koopa leers at the dancing girl. Comma aroused. Mm. <laughs> he says Koopa cock. That's when uh, Mario, Luigi, and Toad break into his bachelor party. And they start doing can can dances, and Martin Koopa gets very aroused. Yeah, watching at, Luigi. Looking at Luigi, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, here's another one uh, verbatim. Bellowing, Mario lunges at Koopa, getting a death grip on his throat. He wrestles him down, punching his face. <laughs> punching his face and balls. <laughs> uh, these are some quotes from Mario and Luigi. You shouldn't have taken that jewel, Mario. Shut up, Luigi. <laughs> Shut your goddamn green mouth, Luigi. You're no brother of mine. You're no good. You got garbage for brains. Uh, give you the rich, Luigi? I'd rather give an AK-47 to a baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, this is a classic Mario line. Damn right, and I've got a score to settle with Koopa. So you gonna help me or just sit there stroking your thing? Let's kick some ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows that that was in the Nintendo manual. Fuck. At one point, uh, Toad tears off a piece of his mushroom head Ooh, and feeds it opposite. to Gluttonous Guard, who has the, the brothers under lock and key. Uh, he doesn't drug him or put him to sleep. The script says that he kills the guard by poisoning him. Okay. Uh, He's this, got poison head. Yeah, this okay. is the, this is to save the Mario Brothers from their ice dungeon room, where they are uh, very slippery. They're they're like just thrown into this dungeon where it's an ice floor, and then underneath it is piranhas, and the sun is going to <laughs> going to it's show up and them. melt it. Yeah, okay. And that's the trap. <laughs> it's the fucking dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, it's, it's like the pit and the pendulum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so five minutes after the stupid baby dinosaur scene. Uh, Mario was approaching Koopa's castle by himself, right? They reunite in the ice dungeon. Okay. Uh, but he's approaching it with a friendly wizard. Oh. And, uh... Kamek? No, 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 no. Kamek's not in this. Okay. I think his name is Bentley. Oh, uh, I remember him. 
And uh, so they're approaching and it starts getting stormy. So the friendly wizard says, don't worry, Mario. He raises his wand and then gets struck by a bolt of lightning and turns to ash. Mm. Mario just shrugs it off and keeps going. He gets struck by a bullet bill. <laughs> uh, he falls into a trap in the castle laid by an evil wizard who says to Mario, sorry, your princess is in another castle. Mario oh. then, according to the script, breaks a chair and tries to kill the wizard. <laughs> It's gonna look good. Yeah, just like a fat wrestler. Yeah, he takes a wooden chair and breaks it and tries to kill a wizard. Okay. Uh, the, the big finale has Mario slinging insults at Koopa like he's Luigi. Yeah, quiet down, fat. <laughs> Koopa keeps growing bigger and bigger until Mario tricks him into dropping the, the crown of invincibility into the lava. Oh. And then he falls in and like he, he like goes to the other side of the bridge. And oh, it's like he the touches the hammer. I remember that. Uh, everyone cheers and they go back to Brooklyn. Uh, the, the king gives them all like their reward. And the movie ends with Mario paying off the mafia. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> he doesn't, like, stand up for everyone on Brooklyn streets or, like, kick them out. He just pays them $10,000. Yeah. That's should have been <laughs> Mario's the, money. That's the end of the movie. <laughs> Ten million dollars. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, Hollywood's got to pay off its own people. I mean, it's okay. It's called Hollywood accounting for a reason. <laughs> so the director, uh, Greg Beeman, was let go from the script when his movie Mom and Dad Save the World flopped hard. Okay. It was scaring the investors, which is ironic because that movie made $2 million over its budget, unlike the Mario movie will. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard of Mom and Dad Save the World. I've seen it. It's um, it, They do a lame cop-out where the bad guys are a legion of idiots, and that's just, it's a whole. Oh, okay. Wait, is it for kids? Yeah. It's, oh, oh, I thought maybe it was like a gritty crime drama about like mom and dad like going in, saving the world and stuff. No, 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 never. Okay. Like a Quentin Tarantino kind of thing. So uh, Light Motive had a hard time finding a new director. For some reason, no one was interested in this script. Yeah, no, I, uh, I don't think that like a, like a video game for kids will really work as a movie, so no. <laughs> uh, the script is insane, right? But I think it was more like all the special effects. They're like, this is going to require us to actually give a fuck if we're going to do well, if we're going to do this script. So no one wanted to do it. Oh, yeah, because I mean, like Terminator 2 would have been like a year or two beforehand. And that would have been like the first CGI. So everything still would have been practical at that point. Uh, they almost got Harold Ramis to do it hmm. from uh, Ghostbusters, Egon Spengler. Yeah. But he saw this. He didn't want to do it until he saw the script. And then he's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I'll pass. <laughs> Uh, they reached hey, an agreement. I'll try to get uh, Bill Murray to do Ghostbusters 3. I bet we could hurry that yeah, up. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> yeah, real quick. Uh, they ended up getting Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jenkel, a two-person director couple. Uh, they knew them because they had done some computer sci-fi weird stuff because they did Max Headroom. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which, um, if people don't know, there was that thing in the Chicago PBS station where someone hacked in. And he was dressed as Max Headroom and it was like pirate. Like I never pirate found thing. them. Yeah, it was cool. It's uh, Max Headroom is like a, it's, it was really, really early, right? It was like 90, 91, and it was like a, like a CGI host. It looked like MTV stuff before that really picked up. He was the host of the future. Yeah, so it was, it was like, they were looking at it like, well, these guys know what's up. Uh, before that, they did a movie called DOA, which no one really cared about, and then they did a lot of commercials and stuff. So they were like, hey, uh, we'll, we'll do it, but only if you let us retool the script. And Light Motive's reason for wanting to do the Mario Bros. movie was they just wanted a bunch of cash. They're like, we're just going to shit this out. We're going to make a bunch of money. We're going to get all, the, all this residuals. And then we're going to be able to fund all of our great movies, like Thief and the Cobbler. Yeah, oh, okay. That's how they could have done it. They could have put, like, half a million dollars into Mario Bros. And they would have made, like, 30 million opening weekend. Yep. So uh, the new directors, Rocky and Animal, did not like the fantasy script. They wanted to go darker for the Super Mario Bros. movie. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to do something like the 80s Batman. The 89, mm -hmm. I think it was, with yeah, uh, yeah, Jack Nicholson. Yeah, yeah, Yep. Yep. Uh, so they bring in a couple new writers uh, named Parker and Terry from In-House, like from, from Light Motive Allied Filmmakers. Uh, they're going to spruce the script up. Uh, they, were gonna, they, they decided to take the movie, make it more about the relationship of Mario and Luigi, right? Add a lot more muck and grime. 
It was a prequel about how the Mario Brothers became the Super Mario Brothers. I know. They ate the mushroom. Yep, yep. They uh, they made it... Uh, they toned down the infidelity and uh, made the cartoon... like It made it like kind of cartoonish Italian, but like yeah, you know, it was a little, little grittier. So, in this one, the Mario Bros. van gets repoed and Brooklyn is plagued by rising unemployment. They're striking cab drivers and Brooklyn women are being kidnapped off the street. So normal Brooklyn, but like a little bit brighter. Yeah, there's some slavery in there. Yep. <laughs> uh, Mario's finances are in the toilet, but in like a bad way for a plumber. Mm, oh, because normally, yeah, you, pl- you plunge the toilet and then yep, you get money. Yeah, the poopy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some uh, porn in there. I'm saving it for later. Mario is depressed, so he's drowning his sorrows in spaghetti sauce. Mm, marinara. Italians like marinara. Mamma mia, marinara. Yeah. Pasta choli, pasta choli. Yeah. Give me some of that uh, long noodles. So Mario can't find any jobs. Uh, Luigi tells him he's found him a job and again has him help a nunnery. Uh, this time they find the locket without throwing punches at each other and breaking pipes. They just find it. Like in, and, like they unclog the pipes and it comes oh, down. Oh, okay. Somebody yeah. flushed it. So they ask the nuns, like, whoa, what is this? Uh, Mario wants to sell it to pay the rent, but Luigi wants to find the rightful owner, right? Uh, so the nuns tell him that the locket... Uh, came with a baby that was brought to their church. Mm. So, like, here's where you can find them. You know, you can find them there. They work at this pizza restaurant. Maybe they're going to get a free pie. So, uh, Luigi falls in love. It's Daisy. She's she's working. She's a waitress there. Falls in love when she translates the pizza menu into haiku. Ah. Um, they leave there. You know, they give her back the, the amulet thing. And then they notice the Scapellis, <gasps> a rival plumbing group following Daisy. Turns out the Scapellis are working for Koopa. They capture Daisy and the Mario Bros. chase after the kidnappers and get lost beneath the city. Luigi takes out their father's old plumbing guy to see if there's a map. And they both enter a mysterious huge pipe after Daisy when they see her purse sitting there. Uh, they find like the legion of homeless living in the sewers. <laughs> they integrate themselves. They, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, uh, they end up in a mossier primordial New York called Dino York. Okay. <laughs> $10 million so far, and Dino York was the best they could come up with. Yeah, 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 I mean, this is average Hollywood thinking. I mean, yeah, this is fine. Uh, so with the help of an unnamed baby dinosaur, again, uh, they escape Koopa's minions and meet the only humans left in the world. They live in a tiny village in Central Park and hail the brothers as the plumbers of prophecy. Because, of course... When Koopa first took over from the king, he had all the plumbers in the land executed as enemies of the state. Yeah. Except for their father. Their father escaped and sired the Mario Bros. Oh, and then he, he hid underground. No, he just died. Oh, he died. Oh, okay. He just he ran had a away. Stroke. Yeah, he ran away and never went back to, to help those people. Okay, that's fine. Um, Joe, is my cat eating something on the table? Did you leave I, food over? I didn't leave food. What? What are you doing, cat? You Fuck you. He's looking at me. <laughs> I saw him eating, and I had to worry for my precious fruity. Yeah, he might be eating plastic. I don't know. That's fine. So I anyway, I like that the 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 plumbers are like exiled Roman gypsies. Like they just took that entire class of workers and just shunted them out of the world. Mm-hmm. What do you need a plumber for? You can just <laughs> poop in the dirt. Uh, the only real direct references are uh, when Mario breaks a rusty square phone booth. And uh, it's just like a square thing, and he punches the rotted yellow pipes, and a bunch of coins fall out. Oh. Uh, so this is where, like, the meteor thing comes in. Um, yeah, they have the, the coin box, and then there's the Kupahari Desert, where it's got a bunch of Mario golf holes. Okay. Uh, the, there's a meteor that hit 65 million years ago, and Koopa's trying to get the last piece of the meteor so we well, can actually, merge it with our world. That's not right. 6,000 years ago. <laughs> Shut up. What? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, in this world, this parallel world, this is what Rocky and, and Morton wanted. Okay. Morton and Jankel wanted. They wanted this uh, this alternate world where reptiles evolved into humans, but they're all like ruthless and scaly and shit. Well, that sounds like an affront to God. <laughs> <laughs> so the brothers are given a golden toolbox and set to find Daisy on their quest in Koopa's stone castle. Okay. Uh, their guide isn't Toad, but through the magic of Booklin. Their uh, plumbing guide comes to life with the voice of their late father. <laughs> it's like the map from Door. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. And uh, he gives life advice, but he only speaks in plumbing terms. Mm-hmm. Remember to wash your foreskin, Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
stop reminding me of that comic. Have you seen the one where Luigi is uh, praying to the Torah? No, I haven't seen that one. Uh, or maybe it's um, he, he's got like the the prayer rug. He's doing that. Oh no, I haven't seen that. <laughs> um, so yeah, they go on a quest through the five burrows dug by like a giant mole in the pit of Monty no mole. return. Yeah, that was yeah. Monty Mole. He's not in there yet, but that, that's got to be him. I know a Monty Mole hole whenever I see it. <laughs> Monty Mole hole, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they go to the Pit of No Return, which is a fancy hip bar you can't leave because it's a satire on New York culture. It's so cool and hip. Mm-hmm. Yep, $17 drinks. <laughs> Everybody's got their hair shaved in the strips. Yep, dastardly. Mm-hmm. Uh, they end up losing the stone, but they rescue Daisy. Then they choose to stay and stop Koopa rather than have Mario just try to fucking leave like an asshole. Uh, in the finale, Daisy kisses Mario on the cheek and says, mm. Mario, you're super. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Nintendo He's had a bunch of... He's gonna get that dussy. <laughs> Shut up. What? <laughs> Fred Dussy. Yeah, that's fine. He's just getting a piece of dussy. <laughs> that Fred Dursey, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Who, was Fred Durst one of the jackass guys? But no, 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 no. I was going to say, who needs the Fred Dursey addicted to painkillers? Oh, okay. I just feel like Fred Durst. Probably, I'd assume, yeah. 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 So uh, Nintendo had a bunch of big companies approach them to make a Mario movie, right? Because it's it's the fucking night. Mario is more recognizable than Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. He's on the cereal. Yeah. Everybody knows that. If you have something on the cereal, it needs to be on the cinema screen. So they had people offering $10 for the rights, which, remember... Uh, since 91, we've halved our money, so that's 20 mil. But don't worry, that's okay, Joe. We've just printed 40% of all the money we've ever printed last year. But that's fine, okay? It's fine. Yeah. Listen, McDonald's just wants to pay you 15 an hour. Not because $15 an hour is worth less than what it was a year ago. That's... Stop. Mm-hmm. Buy Bitcoin. U.S. dollars. No, worthless. Magic the Gathering. Play Invest in shocks. boxes, yep. Yeah. Uh, so lands. Nintendo was uh, uninterested in the offers, right? Because they're fucking loaded already. They don't really see the value of a movie. Uh, Roland Joffrey uh, from Light Motive, he was, I believe, he was the Killing Fields guy. It was owned by those two dudes. Um, he had a plan. So he met with Nintendo of America president Minora Arakawa in person mm-hmm. with the second script in hand. A lot of people, they would just send him like a letter or like an email that took four hours to arrive. Yeah, right? but he proved that he was the ultimate gamer and he was able to speed run Super Mario Bros. in less than five minutes. And that's why they gave the rights to him. In the, in the LA Times article I read, he did have uh, the, the president of North Nintendo of America explain to him that in Japan, Mario 2 was, in fact, called Doki Doki Panic. Okay, that was nice and, of him. And that's not a bit that is actually yeah, in the yeah. article. That was nice of him to, to do a game theory for him. So, um, Nintendo found this script that I describe now more interesting than any other script they'd been approached with. Where a lot of them were, like, direct a lot interpretations. Of them were about jumping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, jumping and moving right, but not mm-hmm. being able to move left. They, they had, like, a red square and a green square on the screen, and then they were going to bounce it up and down for 85 minutes. And that should entertain the kids well enough, I think. <laughs> so, uh, they decided as an experiment. They were going to hand over the movie rights to an independent studio for cheap to see how it would go. So they accepted the offer of merch rights, a little creative control, which they never bothered to really worry about, mm. and either five hundred thousand or two million dollars. I'm not sure which. I think it was. I think I've heard, I've seen two million more. So about four okay. million dollars. Okay. Uh, Miyamoto himself was like, "Yeah, this is a fine idea. Just don't stick too close to the games. Like, do your own thing." So, just like Paper Mario, Miyamoto was wrong on this one. Mm. Uh, I think getting weird with the Mario property and doing this kind of movie probably would have gone really well if there was already a normal Mario. Like, if they took that anime Mario and put it in English and released it here and then had this Mario afterwards, I think people would have been a lot happier about it. I I don't know. Because I haven't seen the original cut, so it's, but I hear it's essentially incomprehensible. Yeah, it's it's... It's, it's like the work print that we saw, but just worse. Yeah. Uh, so this is the third script now. This one's nicknamed Ghostbusters. This is by the same, the same two writers. We're getting Ouija's Mansion. So uh, the directors still weren't happy with the levity of the Mario Bros. movie. They wanted another revision, this time introducing the Dino Hatton parallel universe instead of the Mushroom Kingdom and like the dystopian police state aspects. Yeah. Which it took me until... This came out in 93... It took me 27 years to realize it's called Dino Hatton because it's the opposite of Manhattan. Oh, but... Oh, that made you think. Yeah, yeah, I got you thinking. That's why these people should get $60,000 a year. 
<laughs> so that's not even a lot of money, Joe. Sixty thousand. That's not a lot. Yeah. Now for a movie, man, think triple digits. Yeah. Triple digits. Like it's four digits. <laughs> <laughs> so script number three is drafted up by the same guys as script two, Parker and Terry, in like three weeks. Like they 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 shit this one out quick. Uh, it's uh, nicknamed Ghostbusters because they made Mario into Bill Murray, right? Uh, okay. So uh, yeah, this script and the next two revisions were strong enough that these were the ones that roped in Bob Hoskins and Dennis Hopper. Who both, by the way, stated it was purely for the money. They yeah, didn't even yeah. know it was a video game. I mean, they should have probably just got Bill Murray. Because he was willing to be Garfield the Cat. Why can't you be Mario the Plumber? <laughs> uh, they got Wolf Kroger, who did uh, the Dances with Wolves set design. Um, Tom Hanks and Danny DeVito were almost accepted from Mario. Tom Hanks said yes. But then uh, Light Motive was like, mm, Tom Hanks actually isn't one of the most successful actors in Hollywood. We're going to say no. They cast him away, let me tell you. Yeah. And then uh, Danny DeVito was like, I want to read the script. And then he never got back to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was a little short with him. Hmm. And they only chose Danny. They wanted him because he just looked like Mario. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, big fat. <laughs> fat and small. <laughs> Listen here, fat. Yeah, yeah, quiet down, fat. Um, so now production was really ramping up, right? They began storyboarding the script and started building sets again because they just mm -hmm. tossed all the first script away. Ten Burn million, them. Burn the asbestos buildings. <laughs> um, so a lot of this work ended up, again, being abandoned or just slapped together at the very end just because they had it laying around, especially Yoshi. They spent so much on the Yoshi robot for it to be in the movie for like two minutes. Yeah. Same with the very end. They have Bowser or Koopa. And he just looks like shit. Mm -hmm. Like he's just a plastic fucking dinosaur. When two weeks later you had the T-Rex from Jurassic Park, you know? It kind of looked like uh, the Tammy in the T-Rex. What? It was, a, it was a little girl who owns a dinosaur, right? But like it's, it's a kid movie, but then they found like a version of it with like R-rated blood inserted into it. And they released <laughs> it in 4K. <laughs> oh, that's kind of rad. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Wolf Kroger ended up quitting like a week into production because Rocky and Animal went into his studio and started fucking with his sketches. Yeah. He flipped on and went, I don't mess with your scripts and you don't mess with my sketches and quit right fucking there. So they had to halt production for the producers to find someone new. Uh, they were actually talking to David Snyder from Blade Runner at the start, right? But the, uh, the producers said that the directors thought it was, if he was on board, the Mario movie would be too close to Blade Runner. Or Pee-wee's Great Adventure. Uh, nobody so, likes Blade Runner. Yeah, nobody. So uh, when the directors approached him after they drove Kroger off and told him how much they loved Blade Runner, he took the role for the money. Mm. So uh, in this script, Mario's grumpy and sarcastic, right? But he's not as cartoonishly greedy as he was in the previous script. He, he likes still, to eat pizza. He's still a scumbag. Like, uh, he's willing to swindle a small business owner for $800, but Luigi fixes the washing machine and charges him $200. Uh, again, they brought back Mario owing money to the Mafia? Mm -hmm. uh, but this time it's to the Scapelli brothers. They offer to forgive Mario's $10,000 debt if he sabotages the archaeology uh, dig that's happening next to the Brooklyn Bridge. Because it's fucking with their projects, right? Oh, they gotta get rid of all the dino bones. Yep, yep they gotta uh, stick them in dino hatton. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Luigi meets Daisy by fixing her sink in the Mario Brothers apartment. Like she just asks for help, and he goes down there and he helps fix it. Without her realizing, her stone amulet thing fell and clogged the pipe. Oh. So Luigi finds it and thinks, "Oh, that's kind of weird." Puts it in his pocket to ask her about it later, since she left for work okay. to go work at the archaeology dig. Uh, Luigi overhears the Scapellis talking to Mario and Mario agreeing to flood the dig site. Yeah. So he goes to go warn Daisy. Uh, so him and Mario go back and forth about him agreeing to sabotage the site when they see her get kidnapped by some Sp uh, Scapelli goons named Iggy and Spike. Uh, so it turns out the Scapellas are working for Koopa. <gasps> yeah, I know. So they chase them through a big pipe below the Brooklyn Bridge and they're, they're in Dino Hatton. Uh, it's got the visual style now of that final movie, right? Where it's all wet metal, neon signs, dirty people, and blades being run. Mm -hmm. uh, they describe it in the script as uh, whores chatting with heavily armed Boy Scouts, two priests facing off with knives, and businessmen stiff-arming the lowlifes on walkways. 
Uh, it's all electric powered. Oh, okay. There's like a plant that's got like the meteor that hit, and they're getting the electricity from that. So all the cars are electric. There's all these neon signs. Uh, one of the block payphones starts shooting fire and sounding alarms, and Mario gets too close to it without paying. Uh, a bunch of punk kids come up and mug the brothers because only the rich people use payphones. <laughs> Uh, cops show up and don't stop the kids, but instead arrest the brothers for not having proper ID. And one of the cops is eating a donut that's made out of steak. And I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> that's that kind of funny. Yeah, it's like a little metaphor. Uh, across the street, they see Daisy getting arrested as well for trespassing because the street corner is for prostitutes only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta have separation. You gotta have separation of church and, and state. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, so Koopa has the brothers sent to the de-evolution chamber and Daisy sent to the Koopa World Trade Center. Oh, oh, no, you <laughs> don't. Yeah. Better, not, better not done on September 11th, let me tell you. Uh, the brothers, I'm never going to forget. <laughs> brothers There's no way. <laughs> meet a human named Toad, who's a rebel, right? He's a he's a cool dude. Uh, he gets de-evolved and becomes a half-human chameleon who can turn invisible. Oh, like Gex. Maybe no, they want no, to bring like, in no, Gex. No, like Toad. Like Toad, the Mario Brothers Toad. He's half chameleon. Don't you remember? No, it's not in the game. No, that was Gex. <laughs> he's wi- cracking wise about mm-hmm. Laverne Troy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, this is this is just like in the bathroom of the celebrity's house. Whoa! I remember that quote. Yep. Uh, so Toad helps him beat up the guards while invisible because that's easy and cheap to film. And uh, they push Koopa into the chair to get de-evolved so he could turn into a T Rex in the finale. They should have, like, grabbed at his tail and, like, swung him around a bunch Said of times. so and... long, yeah. fine fella. <laughs> so long, gay Bowser. Uh, there's a scene where they use the, the thwomp boots to blow up half a building and steal a car. Uh, they crash a train through fungus and escape to Toad's hideout. Uh, the fungus is the old Mushroom King, and it's all over the place. It's absorbing all the water and causing this society to fucking suck to live in. Hmm. Uh, Daisy doesn't know where the stone is because Luigi still has it. So Koopa announces on all the TVs that he's going to execute her live right after the golf tournament in the desert. Which actually, that does, that sounds like kind of fun to do like a golf tournament, like Running Man thing. I think that's a fun idea. Yeah, yeah. I like well, that. The, the, like if you film like a whole golf scene, that means all the producers get to play golf that day. Because oh, they have true. the golf. Yeah, they have the golf stuff there already. <laughs> uh, so the Mario Bros sneak up to the broadcaster booth to get Daisy, but it's a trick. It's Iggy in women's clothing. Isn't that funny? Mm. Does Luigi kiss him? Uh, maybe. Uh, okay. They escape on golf carts with Toad. Uh, and they're like dressed up like Mad Max golf carts, right? Uh, but then they run into a T-Rex and piranha plants in the green, which is like a dense jungle, okay. and get captured. Uh, Koopa takes the stone and decides to kill the brothers. Mario is strapped into a weird leather vest thing in the mm-hmm. desert that's like... Joe, how knowledgeable are you about Japanese gay porn? Extremely. So you know about Gachi Muchi? Mm-hmm. You know their leather vests? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's like, it's that. They strap them down. Okay. Uh, he's strapped like down a, to it, be eaten by the sand eels. The famous say, Mario it, enemy from Mario 2. Okay, it's like a Japanese game show where it's like two men with like a pipe in their ass and there's a mouse in the middle and they have to blow farts at the mouse to try to get it away from their ass. <laughs> <laughs> he is spooking away. Yep. Um, so Luigi is taken to the ice dungeon from the earlier script where he's going to sit on a frozen block that'll melt, right? Like they hit mm-hmm. it with flamethrowers. That's, like, that's like a saw trap. Yeah. It's scary. So um, there's only one single fish, though. There's only one big fish. Okay. Uh, so there's no real reason. To, like, I don't know why Koopa sends him the separate death traps. He could just kill them there. But instead, he just flies Luigi in a helicopter to a dungeon and just straps Mario down to the desert. Well, you gotta have fun. I guess. Yeah. So uh, Luigi feeds a bullet bill to the fish and it fucking explodes. <laughs> It'd be like the end of Jaws. Yeah, yeah. Smile. He probably says, smile, you son of a fish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the guard hears the explosion, the same guard that Toad tries to kill in the other script, and he says, hey, you killed the fish, and then takes Luigi out and throws him into a different prison cell and just says, now you're going to starve to death. Mm. Uh, and, and then he's he's next to Daisy, and they talk, and then they break out, yada yada. Uh, Mario gets saved by Toad, who decided to bury himself in the sand like a spider to hide from Koopa. But see, they're predicting Captain Toad all these years later. Yeah. 
Uh, the sand wheel is like wiggling and trying to bite Mario's dick. Mm-hmm. And then Toad saves him. And then they unite and then they climb the Koopa World Trade Center to get out, right? Yeah. Children like it whenever a character's penis can be bitten off. Yeah. So uh, it makes your get... thrilling, uh, like kind of like a thrilling Good like, content. Yeah, 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 conclusion. Yeah. So they get to the top of the tower. Uh, Luigi and Daisy are like, Mario, jump, Mario, we have to get out. Mm-hmm. And Do then, the super jump. And then Mario decides to stay and fight Koopa in a way too expensive scene where they're flying through a wormhole and everything changes after each punch. Mm. Uh, this is where my favorite line in any of these scripts is. So, <clears throat> let me clear my throat for this because this is a good one. Mario and Koopa are both at the end of their ropes. But Koopa is about to give the finishing blow. He says to Mario, you're nothing but a plumber. Mario responds with, you're goddamn right, you piece of shit. And then punches him out of the wormhole. Yeah, yeah. Uh, They're back in Brooklyn. And uh, they're sitting on an ambulance saying whatever dumb platitudes about plumbing and family. And then before they go home, a giant, pure energy, fully regressed Koopasaurus rises from the river riding the meteor. Mm-hmm. It's holding the energy like some reins, and it fly, whips it and flies at Mario. Okay, and ends like uh, 2001, like there's just a dino fetus, like just right next to like the planet. <laughs> Maybe it winks at him. Yeah, it is like that, but if Mario threw a like, amulet and it explodes, and that's the end of the movie. Oh, okay. So the next script uh, is Die Hard, is the nickname for it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So light motive was starting the panic. Film was, filming was going to start really fucking soon, but they still don't have the script that they wanted. Uh, despite pumping out two scripts within a few weeks, they fire Terry and Parker for creative differences. Mm-hmm. For taking too long of a bathroom break. <laughs> and they bring in uh, new ones to pump up the script. Again, uh, Dick Clement and Ian Frenet. Uh, they were, they did like British TV shows or something. Mm. Also unrelated, but, uh, Terry, uh, died in Jamaica. He was oh. killed in Jamaica. Okay. Yeah. He, he went to Jamaica on like vacation and then he was just robbed and fed to sharks. Oh, I was going to say like a giant banana with Rastafarian hair <laughs> fell on him How at the carnival. So they had, they had their actors now, right? They convinced them with that script. They had Bob Hoskins on board. Uh, they changed Mario from a surly Bill, Milley, uh, Bill Murray to like a positive figurehead, right? Who's like really fascinated with plumbing and the family business. Uh, Luigi is now not that interested in family stuff, but he's like, hey, I'm going to learn to appreciate my plumber roots. Uh, Daisy gets a friend and the Goomba named Hark that merges with Toad in later scripts and they become the same character. Uh, Iggy and Spike now become allies of the Mario Bros, but without any real good reason. In the final movie, they get evolved to be intelligent because Bowser or Koopa, I'm sorry, is tired of them being dumb. And they, they so they get evolved. They're really intelligent. They realize Koopa's a shitty ruler. But that's only because their actors came up with it. Like, oh, okay. they They invented all of those characters. Like they, the Iggy and Spike, they don't get updated at all in the next uh, three scripts. Hmm. It's at the very end where, the, where they just let the actors make the characters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Koopa's assistant, if you remember her, Lena, who had like the red hair, uh, she was in the previous scripts doing nothing. But okay. in this one, she leaves Koopa for Mario. See, I thought for sure that was like Birdo. Yeah, in the movie, but that's no. what I thought. Yeah, but nope. Uh, she's apparently a really famous like Shakespearean actor, too. There's a lot of Shakespeare people there. Yeah. Uh, Bob Hoskins, the Lena, John Leguizamo and a few others. There's enough that uh, they actually had a Shakespeare company. That but they would, would do every week. Yeah, now she's got to go to like Comic Con, and there's like a line out the door for her to sign it from being in the Mario Bros. movie, <laughs> and nobody cares that she was like in Hamlet. So uh, Koopa in this one, I, I guess they just missed it. Like he doesn't know who Daisy is or why he needs the rock, so he's just kind of doing shit. If you can imagine it, at the fourth total rewrite, things are coming apart at the seams. Mm-hmm. Um, they shuffle around characters like Toad's three friends who had dumb fuck names from like Waterworld, uh, Big Bertha, and the fan favorite Bloober. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, I, I've I love seen Bloober. some erotic art of Bloober. Uh, weirdly, they wrote out the Goombas. Like, they don't do anything anymore. They don't hunt the Mario Bros. They just kind of sit in the background. But who are the Mario Brothers going to step on? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Same with Yoshi. Yoshi's just... He, he does like one thing and that's it. They just say, he just says hi to Daisy. He sticks out his tongue and he goes, <laughs> uh, there's a lot more action in this one. 
they wanted the the producers wanted more action so they changed the golf scene to be like a running man bounty hunt where they had like the the mad max like cars flying at them and stuff uh, or no that's the next room this one it was just like a like a running man hunt where it was they, they decided to change it into a romantic family comedy this time that's script number six okay yes <laughs> uh but they had morton and wendy providing sports commentary and it's ah. called Die Hard because they bump into Bruce Willis in the air ducts of the Koopa World Trade Center, which I'm sure they locked in Bruce Willis for that cameo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he'll uh, it'll only cost him two mil. To do. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. You just throw it in. Just throw it. You can write a check. So next one, uh, this is Mad Max or Goldilocks, whichever one you want to call it. So Dick and Ian redo the script again. Uh, this time the directors wanted a more sophisticated and kid-friendly narrative with a strong focus on appealing to the teenage demographic. Teenagers love watching, like, little kids' movies. Like, I, I see, like, a bunch they of, like, 16-year-olds. Yeah, like, they definitely yeah. don't go gay, gay. <laughs> yeah, they love, like, watching, like, Happy Feet and, like, Cars 4 and stuff <laughs> and, like, you, the baby movie. Did you, ever, did you ever see that quote about the guy who's like, if someone, asked, if someone held a gun to my head and asked me to write the script for Happy Feet 3, I'd say pull the trigger. Yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> I will not write that, sir. <laughs> um, so they went through. They took out a bunch of the old conflicting comedy bits from the earliest uh, Princess Bride script that didn't match the feel. Uh, they got rid of Toad's stupid half-chameleon invisibility powers and made Yoshi bite someone into the movie to justify the $200,000 robot. Mm. Uh, they spent more time in the desert because it's cheap to film with armored vehicles, which is why they called it Mad Max. Um, which does explain too the stupid cheese car in the final movie. If you oh, remember that, yeah, there was like yeah, a yeah, wedge. Yeah. So yeah, they must have had just that like lying around then after. Uh, Dennis Hopper wears a black warlock robe, and he looks like the new Swain from League of Legends with a uh, black hair. He also there's a scene where uh, Lena is like laying on a bed, and like the sheets are all disheveled, and they're both sweaty, and she's and like there's pillows torn up, and there's scratches all over. And she says that was great. Now let's have sex. And that uh, made me that made me smile. It's yeah, kind of funny. Yeah. That's uh, actually why he's so upset at the Mario Brothers. It's uh-oh. because Luigi poked holes in all his condoms. <laughs> now he's gonna have eggs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, they changed it also to have Koopa swallow the bomb bomb and explode into chunks in a sewage drain. Uh, Luigi is made spiritual. Toad becomes a Mad Max warrior. Uh, Iggy and Spike join the brothers as allies in this one. Um, but with an actual reason, where uh, Bowser left them in the desert to be eaten by fire snakes. Oh. A uh, couple notes for when I was skimming this one. Because this one, it was it was mostly the same, so I just kind of skimmed it. I didn't fucking read it. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of unexplained stuff in this world, Mario. UFOs, psychic phenomena, out-of-body experiences. I don't buy that bullshit. Uh, at one point, Luigi is hitting the back of the knees with a nightstick and says, You son of a bitch, Koopa. Uh, the Goombas had these bazookas that would shoot uh, tennis balls covered in uh, oil that was on fire, and it was going to cause fires on set, so they cut it out. Yeah, well, also, little kids would probably like want to Im- imitate their like favorite hero- heroes yeah, yeah. and yeah, just cover their uh, toy balls with gasoline and just <laughs> throw them around the house and light their house on fire. There was a shitload of action figures and Happy Meal toys for the movie. Oh, I've never seen any. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um... Uh, also, Iggy gives Mario the bomb bomb, like a tiny one, to kill himself if he gets captured with Koopa. So that's like a fun, cool kids movie. Yeah, you gotta put it behind your tooth. <laughs> yeah, use a cyanide pill, Mario. Yep. Jesus Christ. Kids like suicide. So this was the script that everyone was finally happy or happy enough with, right? Uh, the directors thought it showcased their idea for Dino Hat and Well. It was decently funny. The actors thought it wasn't that great, but it, whatever. I'll, I'll do it. I'll take my paycheck. It's better than look who's talking now. Uh, the producers thought it had a good mix of action and grit and like comedy. The sexy dinosaur movie about mm. a dystopian Mad Max future that also had Mario and Luigi in it. It was finally ready after five scripts. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you know what they say. Like, the more times you mess with the script, the better the yeah, final yeah. movie will be. So script number six. Mm-hmm. This is by two new people, Ed Solomon and Ryan Rowe. Uh, the script was finished, but light, uh, light motive was going way over budget, if you can imagine that, uh, from doing it five times, right? They needed some more money to make this thing work, so they signed a contract with Disney, who were impressed by the set design. 
Uh, Jeff Katzenberg came down and they put on a stupid little parade of all the costumes and vehicles. Yeah, they put like Mickey Mouse like on top oh. of. Yeah. yeah, he was just climbing on the Mario Brothers back. Uh, he actually um, said that he was interested in getting Mario and Luigi in like Disney World and shit. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why they they agreed to do it. So they were they were going to be doing uh, distributing it through Hollywood Pictures or Buena Vista or whatever it's called, right? Uh, Disney took one look at the script though and went rightfully. What the fuck is this? This is not Mario Bros. Uh, so they brought in two new writers to brighten up the script without telling the directors. Mm-hmm. They just gave them a brand new script and said, you're shooting this one now. So, uh, yeah, that caused a lot of fucking fights immediately. Uh, the producers had to ban the writers and directors from interacting at all. Because every time they saw each other, they would just start fighting. Yeah, well, they would, they would, you, you would hear like one of them would just start like a low growl, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, it would just erupt into biting. Yeah, and I would scratching. make the sounds, but then my kitty would get scared, and I don't want to scare my fur baby. Oh, he's behind there. He's just chilling. So yeah, the the uh, the the new writers they wrote out a bunch of the big budget scenes, like most of the desert stuff, uh, consolidated a bunch of characters together. They got rid of Bloober. Yep, they got a bloober. Yep. Uh, they added a Rest double wedding at the end of the movie. Just Mario and Luigi both get married now. It's a shotgun wedding. Um, yeah, they went back to most of the third script. Uh, you know, the one with the golf game and uh, Mario owing money to the mafia. Uh, Disney tossed in the Koopaling names on a bunch of characters and then said, all right, we're done. Uh, also, apparently it forced them to wear the actual colored suits. They just weren't going to wear the red or green overalls at all. Hmm. That had to be forced by Disney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, script number seven. Uh, the director couple were fucking furious about Disney, right? They were about to quit and then just abandon the. They were abandoned. just kicking the trailer. <laughs> 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 um, one of the one of the actors, Toad, uh, when he showed up on set, one of the directors was crying at a picnic table by himself, which is always a real confidence booster. Yeah. Uh, so they. Instead of quitting, because they were already 60% of the way through the movie, you know, by the time they get your seventh script, uh, they brought in their own writer, Ed Solomon. Uh, he did Bill and Ted and went on to do Men in Black. So he actually knew what he was doing. He was a, he was a good writer. Uh, <clears throat> he writes out a bunch more of the special effects and dialogue, right, to speed things up. Uh, he lets Daisy do stuff that Disney took away. And the PDF of the final script you know those Necco wafers, like those candy tubes mm. that old people eat? Yeah, yeah, you just suck out the sugar, and then you're left with like a hollow, bitter tube. No, 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 no. That's not it. Oh, no, yeah. I'm thinking like the wafers that are like pale, and they're like, it's a smarty. Well, yeah, but I thought there was like, I thought there was like round, like balls of candy in them, and you suck that, you suck I, that out, and then you have like a, a thing, <laughs> you have a UFO shaped thing after. I have no fucking idea what you're talking about, Joe. <laughs> you suck, you suck the sugar out of the tube. <laughs> And then you're left with like a round puck. So there's there's five different colored pages from five completed drafted scripts and six different typefaces. So there's five scripts that were in here. So technically you could say there was 11 scripts. Oh, okay. And then there was uh, six people that were revising each one constantly. Mm-hmm. There's one guy there and his only job was just to remove all the slurs out of it. <laughs> he, oh, his, he had a packed schedule. 12 yeah. weeks of filming he was there for. Yeah. Uh, so 11 people were tearing at this script, right? Five colors, six typefaces. Uh, Disney, Light Motive, Allied, Filmmakers, which were the ones actually on the ground. Uh, the directors, the writers, uh, the executive producer, or, uh, director of photography, all of them. They were all fucking fighting about it. Mm-hmm. No one's talking to anyone, and filming has already been underway for months. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like the same thing that happened with Alien 3, is they just start filming that with no script for no for some reason. I mean... <laughs> But they always say you want like a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Like you want yeah, somebody yeah. to be adding salt to the pot. Especially somebody with adds 40 marinara million. sauce. Yeah, somebody yeah. adds eggs, egg yolks, <laughs> egg to the shells. Pot. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the uh, the the scenes are scenes will be filmed and they'll have to be refilmed because of script revisions and updates in the middle of the day, mm-hmm. right? And this place, by the way, they're filming is a cement factory in uh, North Carolina in the summer. So that's the South. It is hot as fuck. It is 90 degrees on the ground floor and up to 120 in the scaffolding. 
What's yeah, your three the levels? lights? Yeah, the lights like are basically extremely hot. You don't really want to go up and touch like a film light. You'll burn your fingertips yep. off to the bone if you touch them. Yeah, but then you'll you won't have any uh, fingerprints. Mm -hmm. Government can't trace you. Uh, so they uh, yeah, the movie's release date is in ten months, right? And like flipping through the script, it's a nightmare. I read through some of it and dialogue will just repeat on the next page because someone had like revised the thing, removed a paragraph or done something and it's all fucked up. It's like when I edited uh, revival of Dungeon Dragons real play podcast, I would uh, fuck up in the editing and then all of a sudden one person's dialogue would be off from the rest and I'd have to fucking spend an hour fixing it. Mm. I just like, uh, I like long shots. I like to let dialogue go on for 10, 25, 45 minutes at uh -huh. a time. So, yeah, the movie's coming out in 10 months, and they haven't even finished filming. Uh, the directors were extremely lucky that the people who wrote the third script, Terry M. Parker, the one that died in Jamaica, okay. and then his writing partner, just li they literally just happened to be in North Carolina, and they were begged and hired on to consult at the request of the directors, right? Yeah, yeah. So they went through and they added a ton of shit. Uh, they wrote a bunch of lines to be 80 yard. Almost every single scene in the movie, if there is not a close-up of someone's face, has 80-yard lines in to explain what the fuck is happening. Um, the uh, they, made, they did the dinosaur prologue with the Homer Simpson voice. Yeah, 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 Dan Castellanetti. Uh, Disney apparently decided, based on their test audiences, one of the major confusing parts of the movie was that the Goombas didn't have subtitles. Oh. So they removed the subtitles from the Goombas. Uh Terry and Parker's original script is where they started filming, and it's also where they ended it. So they just took this huge circle that cost them $20 million. Um, apparently, too, they had to intervene with Disney, Light Motive, and the directors to get their names and Ed Sullivan on the final credits mm. instead oh, yeah, of the yeah. previous guys. Because, like, no, fuck them. We had to fix their script. Yeah. Uh, at the very end, uh, the producers uh, just said, fuck it. And they kicked the directors off and had Dean Semler, the, the DP, finish, uh, finish the shoot and just get everything else that was left. Yep. And then they just said, all right, fuck it. We're done. Get these assholes out of here. We're gone. And they've stolen one too many jelly donut from the craft table and they yep. will not be getting breakfast tomorrow. People were stealing from the set. Oh, yeah. There was literally a... Uh, so, the, so the people on set, after a certain point, even if it was at 90 to 120 degrees um, and you weren't having to reshoot shit constantly, you're, you're going to steal from a film set, right, Joe? As yeah. someone who has uh, who has guarded film equipment, they literally had real ass. Uh, oh, God, it wasn't AR-15s. It was. Um, fuck, it's like an MP4. I don't know guns. I'm sorry. Hmm. It was like an M14. They had real ass guns in a storefront and they just had these college kids guarding it and they were falling asleep. So someone could have stolen a functional, unloaded, but a real-ass gun on set. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the very best of times, like, a film crew is, like, basically three degrees away from, like, a breaking point. From just, like, setting the set on fire. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the people there, they fucking hated this movie. It sucked. Uh, on set... Well, okay. Let me rephrase that. Half the crew had a really great time. Everyone that was an actor, it sucked super hard uh on set people would call them rockabelle or those british cunts and other nice names mm -hmm. uh they would wear shirts with all the dumb shit the directors would say to them uh one of the sh one of the guys would have a shirt that just said batman on it and that's because uh, one of the directors complained when the crew was putting together a dark shot like they were making it look too much like batman while the director was wearing a batman hat mm. <laughs> uh the biggest problem was that the directors had to appeal to Disney. They had to appeal to producers and all these other people that were constantly changing shit. So they would, one person would say, do it, go to the right. And the other person would say, go to the left and then go to the right or go up and then go down. And they were, they just wouldn't talk to each other. So they would film something. And then the other one would like swap out for them and say, no, 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 we have to redo this whole thing. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to do it happier with your mouth open and you have more open. It, it is hot as fuck. There's no air conditioning in this place. And you are doing an average of 16 hours every single day, seven days a week. Uh, there's one extra. They were also filming another movie at the same time, not in the cement factory, but nearby. So a lot of the people were doing double duty. You would work 16 hours and then go work 16 hours at the other set. 
and then go work at the Mario Bros. again. Because if you said no, they weren't going to call you back. Mm -hmm. And everyone is getting paid cuckoo money to show up to this set. Oh, okay. Yeah, over overtime. Yeah, hell yeah. If I was, uh, like, one of the main actors, there would just be a shot in the movie where just I'm laying on the ground doing the lines just because I refuse to get back up. I refuse, <laughs> you have to film this ground You're, you're like the guy, the, the Blade guy who refused to open his eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, the, uh, the, the place was so hot that, like, the Goomba actors would just fucking collapse in the heat. They would melt. <laughs> Their faces, they're melting. Because the Goomba actors, uh, so they were, they were under the jurisdiction of MEL, Movie Effects Laboratory. Which you can go to their website, by the way, Joe, and you can buy burnt skin. Oh, so you don't have yeah. to make your own anymore. You can just buy it. Oh. But uh, the Goombas, they would, uh, they would hire extras from like the local area, right? And you had to be six foot tall. And you just wore this thing. That was like an animatronic. And it was tied to your head. And you had like a puppet thing. and uh, Probably weighed like 85 pounds on top of your head. At least. Uh, the wool coats that they wore, because it was wool, 100 pounds. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's 120 degrees. You're wearing a hundred pound jacket for fucking six hours at a time. People were collapsing. So what they did is they built these little fans in there to try and keep it cool. And uh, they would catch on fire. They would burn the Goomba extras. <laughs> the fans barely worked. But uh, the, they were treated the best out of all the actors because the, uh, the, the MEL people, they knew that their handiwork was only going to be represented by the people wearing the Goomba thing. So they had like their own private masseuse. And they were, like, staying in these really nice, like, waterfront hotels and shit. Don't you talk to me like that. I'm a Goomba. I'm a Goomba, <laughs> yeah, yeah. damn it. Exactly. Uh, one, of the, um, one of the actors, the guy Toad, he brought his, uh, his uh, nephew on set. And he brought, like, his kids on there. And, like, all of his kids got the same swirly haircut and shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, they had to wear the Goomba outfit for some of the scenes. They passed out in exhaustion. He brought his nephew on set, right? And uh, they went to the Goomba section. And the guy was like, hey, hold on here, little Timmy, who's like four years old. He just abandons his nephew in this room and goes to get a massage. He comes back out and the kid's on the floor crying because there's like 14 Goombas all hovering over yeah, him. Yeah, they're stopping. Him. Yep. Him. Some of the Goombas are doing blow. <laughs> they thought it would be fun to scare a kid. Yep, Dennis Hopper was absolutely smashed during this too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um. So, uh, but I'll get to him in a second. So, uh, the lady that played Lena, Fiona Shaw, um, in one shot, she took a sip from a drink with a worm in it, right? She thought it was fake, so she went, like, you know, she downed the worm. And then the directors were so impressed, they had her do it five times and then had the great idea to spend $3,000 on worms and film a mud bath scene because this actress had the gall to try and, like, be professional. Yeah, yeah, we gotta put more worms in her. Yeah, I'm sorry, lady, but um, you didn't say no to drinking this worm, so now you're gonna have to swim in them. Yeah. Like, fear yeah. factor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> would you, uh, would, okay, would you rather eat a goat's testicles, uh, eat... Eat a goat's hooves. Or, uh, <laughs> eat a bug. Yeah, yeah. Or, or lick a bug or marry a bug. Yeah, you're going to have to marry a beetle. For, for at least $8,000. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not That's even the enough. top prize, yeah. Not even enough to cover the wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, pr the prop dude that did all the fungus, uh, he uh, told the uh, LA Times that he's like, yeah, I'd be making a prop and uh, I would just rush it. Because if I didn't finish it, they would come in and tell me they wanted something else. So I would just rush every single job I had. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Which is always good. Well. That's that's what you want on a, on a, on a movie mm -hmm. set. A lot of things done quickly. You want things done without thought. They would uh, go up to the uh, Oscar winning cinematographer and give him a list of all the lenses and exact like lighting and camera stuff that they wanted. And he would just snap back at him. Why the fuck am I here? Get away from me. Yeah. Yeah. Keep away from me. Yeah, the they did that to everyone, though. They came mm. into the writers. They came in and they were fucking with everything. And this movie had a lot of money. So all these people were like professionals that knew what they were doing and did not take kindly to that shit. Uh, with, uh, so Bob Hoskins and uh, Bob Hoskins with Mario, he was hot. He was, he was booming. He just came off of Who, Kill, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, right? Uh he uh, described the movie as the worst thing I ever did was Super Mario Brothers. It was a fucking nightmare. The whole experience was a nightmare. <laughs> it had a husband and wife team directing whose arrogance had been mistaken for talent. After so many weeks, their own agent told them to get off the set. Fucking nightmare. Fucking idiots. Mm. The guy was a cunt and Annabelle was a cow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
It's a lot of fond memories on that set. Uh, Dennis Hopper, um, he told this to the LA Times while they were filming. Um, they were talking to him, and he said, uh, oh, God, where was it I had it? It was really fucking funny. Um, he uh, told the LA Times, the director's not talking to the press is the only intelligent thing I've ever heard them do. Mm. Uh, he told them that he would he stopped bothering to learn his lines because it changed every single day, and that I don't think it's gonna hurt my character. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's how, that's the method I kind of followed with a uh, bunch of the bakers. Yeah, you just told Tyler to go fuck off. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fuck I'm gonna off. do it my way. Uh, a few weeks into filming, uh, he just wouldn't do a shot anymore unless they could prove to him that it was necessary. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, near the end of filming too, which this is supposed to be a seven week shoot and it was 13 weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dennis Hopper, one of the few lines he liked was cut out and he forced the writer, the, the Parker guy to look up the word act in the dictionary in front of everyone before he would continue with the scene. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another one, he, uh, raged at the directors over the script for two and a half hours. Mm. They had 300 extras that were prepped for the next scene, and for two and a half hours, he just screamed at the director. Oh, he's a real Klaus Kinski. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what Coke does. Mm -hmm. He fired a gun into a tent of extras because they were being too loud. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah. Um, the guy Spike uh, told in the interview uh, about him and the rest of the crest want to do their first and only dry reading. You know what a dry reading is, right, Joe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no alcohol allowed. It's dry, <laughs> completely dry. But then whenever you go, you whenever whenever just, you go to film, <laughs> you can do a wet reading. It's, it's it's just everyone, all the actors get around and they just read from the script. Yeah, yeah. So they all go in there and they just do a monotone, like they're not they're not acting it. They're they're just reading it. And the guy's like, okay, you know what? He finishes. He's like, okay, okay, that's not that bad. Uh, you know, this is this is going to be give us a good baseline. Think of ideas about our characters and all this stuff. And then the director just went, oh, that's wonderful. You know, Great job, you guys. It's so wonderful. And they were just praising him. And then he's like, uh oh, mm -hmm. this is going to be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> it was our it was our only opportunity to start doing something creative and put in work to improve delivery and dialogue. But they just wanted to move on to something else. They were focused only on the visuals and didn't care about the story or characters. Um, he, that dude had a lot of interesting stories on the, on that website. He had like this huge fucking interview and uh, he told them how, uh, him and Iggy, I don't remember the characters names, but you can find their interview. Uh, they basically took over the characters, right? After all the rewrites, their characters just like disappeared from the movie halfway in. So they, uh, they went up to the directors and they were pitching their ideas for lines and they were like, yeah, please take this character off of our back. We don't want to do this. So they did like this whole improvised rap scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all That's these the work front. They came up with their own uh, their own hairstyles and just said like, hey, uh, hairstyle lady, can you do my hair like this? And the directors were like, I I have so much where I played. I, I don't know why they chose not to give a shit about these characters, hmm. but micromanage everything else. Um, uh, eventually, they just stopped listening to anything the directors said. They were just like, okay, uh, you know, this is in the script. And then they'd just be like, hey. So they'd record the one of the script and say, hey, can we do a different one? And they'd be like, yeah, sure. And so then that would be much better than the actual script. So then everyone else just started doing that. Mm -hmm. And then the directors could couldn't... improv the movie. Yeah, the directors couldn't hold anyone back anymore and they wouldn't listen to them. They'd just ignore them when they told them to redo the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he also told me, uh, told me personally, oh, my best, oh, my best friend okay. Iggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Iggy. He told me that uh, da the actress that played Daisy, Samantha Mathis, mm. uh, in the house she stayed in, there was a ghost in the basement. Oh, really? Yeah, this is apropos of nothing in the interview. He just says, "I went to Samantha Mathis's house, and there was a ghost in the basement." That's why she was hooking up with uh, Luigi. He's got a big. He's got the Ghost yep. O Supper three thousand. Yep, in Luigi's mansion. Did. They did hook up. Oh yeah. Uh, so at some point during the production, the union stuck their head in, right? Yeah. So North Carolina is a right to work state, which means employees do not, their, their employment is not contingent on a union. They do not have to join unions to work and an employer cannot stop you from joining or forming a union. So, uh, many companies were filming in North Carolina because of this. They were all going to Wilmington, kind of like how they do with Georgia. Now Georgia is also mm -hmm. a right to work state. Uh, they wouldn't have to, they could just tell the Screen Actors Guild to suck me off, you know? 
Uh, at one point, the union organized. So the people that were part of the union on the set were, they stopped everything. They're like, we're not going to work on this for whatever. They were doing like a, like a whole world, like countrywide strike. Uh, so the crew and the union took a day to discuss it. The crew took a vote and voted not to unionize because the production people were like, we're just going to pay you what your pension would be. We're going to pay you that directly. And then the union people, the reps got really pissed about it. And they're like, well, fuck you, man. Um, look at this fucking work site. This blows. I'm just going to take the money. Like, you're not doing anything for me. Mm-hmm. So the union just lost that battle. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, the directors wasted a lot of time with dumb bullshit. Uh, seven week shoot turned into 13 weeks. Yeah. Um, they spent 12 hours filming a shot of five seconds where food falls off of a cart and one of the little Allosaurus dinosaurs picks up and runs away. And because it's a fucking puppet that's like mechanical, that's really hard to do because the food doesn't fall at the same spot all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it just lands on his head. It, like his jaw falls off. The children scream it in horror looking at it. Yeah. Uh, the, the restaurant scene, they did it three times which took like eight hours because they had to set everything back up and they had to cook the spaghetti again. Mm -hmm. That's because he wanted the spaghetti more visible on the plate. Yeah. So they shot it once, one did a redo, and then Bob Hoskins' eyebrows were wrong, so they did it again. Mm -hmm. And that was just a whole day. That's a whole day of filming that was wasted. It's a long Goodfellas tracking shot through the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, one yeah. single take, nine and a half minutes. Uh, they did a, a real Stanley Kubrick mm -hmm. in the scene where they dropped the amulet into, uh, into Lena's hand. They did it 72 times. Yeah. I think I think he did the blood elevator, like, it's, like, probably about 60 times. I forget the exact number, but, yeah, it's a lot. And it took two, it took, what was it, it was two weeks to clean up the thing. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shot, I think, the shoot lasted for, like, a year and a half. God damn. Uh, so the final scene, uh, the finale scene, they had to redo after, every time they did it, it cost them $100,000, and they had to do it at least twice because one of the extras they hired was just some, like, biker dude that was driving the cars. And his pants caught on fire because a spark fell down from the rafters. Mm. There was a serious problem because everything was metal, right? And it was all thrown together like, we want to get this done. We're fucking dying here. So people would get cut and stabbed and blood would fall down <laughs> from the thing. Mm -hmm. It's Eldritch. The blood <laughs> would rain down on the Super Mario Bros. set. Apropos of nothing. You'd have people sweating and their fucking prosthetics would fall off because it's sweat. Mm -hmm. Somebody would lose an ear. Yeah, yeah. Because everyone had everyone had lizard shit on them or they had funky clothing or they had like a, something. And it would always melt. So they'd always have to come back down. Uh, the extras that were in the cages, they'd have to go up there in a scissor lift and you're just stuck in a cage for nine hours. You mm -hmm. can't piss. You can't eat. Mm -hmm. You can't get a drink of water. You got like water. a bottle. <laughs> they just give you a bottle. Nope. That's like Because well, no. that might be visible in the shot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a guy who would who was flicking cigarette ashes at the Mario Bros. And he was a non-smoker, but he had to be up there for six hours. And he did 70 takes of <sighs> and kicking the ashes at Mario Luigi. Yeah. And he got really sick from it. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, in Koopa's office. This is my favorite one. Uh, the one where he orders the pizza, that office, that scene that didn't need to be in the movie. Um just before uh, filming, Rocky and Animal came in and demanded that the south wall be moved to the north side. The set designer told them, that's not how it looks. It, it was designed to be viewed from this angle, and they insisted that he move it. So he goes, all right. So three days of work, and they move it to the other side. And when they're doing that, nothing can be filmed in that area because they have to take everything mm -hmm. down. You got to move the wall. So they move it over there, and then the next day they come in, and they go, oh, yeah, no, this doesn't work. You need to move it back. And so they take it all down and they move it again. And each time they did that, you would have all these, you would have 300 fucking extras that were all sitting there waiting to work. And they'd just be sitting there because you can't film this anymore. So you have to go to the prop department. You have to go to the makeup department. You have to, you go, have to go to the all ice cream things. department. No, there's no ice cream. There no. was a lady that sold tomatoes at the front gate. Oh, that's nice of her. Yeah. She sold tomatoes to all the people. Okay, tomacos. Next, next to the next to the picnic tables that the directors would cry at. Yeah, <laughs> the muddy, all the all the 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 trailers and shit were just sinking in the mud too because it was wet as fuck outside. Well, they're going down to Dino Hatton. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're sinking <laughs> down. Uh, another shot. Uh, it cost them a lot of money. They had Iggy climbing a pipe, but they had him do it backwards, and they were gonna reverse the shot. But then they didn't think that steam moves. 
So in the shot, the steam is just moving backwards. They couldn't use it. Mm -hmm. It was just thrown away. It's like the exorcist, like, uh, Reagan and Spider walk down the stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, The directors would leave town to go film a commercial in the middle of production. Like, yeah, they, yeah that's, they, that's normal. Yeah. Yeah. They just leave to go do a commercial or some other work. Right. While set design was getting set up. They'd come back and go, no, no, no. You need to start over. That's not right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like to do with Nick Swartz, our production designer. I'll, he'll like, he'll spend like a couple weeks like making something and then I'll like, I'll come up and I'll be like, oh, this wow. Looks, that's... This looks gay. No, I'll be like, wow, that looks really neat. And I'll pick it up. But then it'll accidentally smoosh in my hand and I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. You have to redo this. <laughs> I accidentally broke your gun. <laughs> <laughs> you let me near something that was precious to you. Honestly, that's his fault. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would often have Mario and Luigi standing around ready for the clapper while they fucked off to fix like an extra's hair or costumes, which are things that you hire people to do that get very pissed off if they're not allowed to do it. Uh, <laughs> this... um. What would happen, too, is that they would have the Mario and Luigi sitting there, and their stand-ins are being paid to just not do anything. Oh, okay. Mario's stand-in, by the way. Uh, so you remember uh, in The Big Lebowski, Jesus' bowling partner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That big he fat looks guy. exactly maybe like Bob him. Hoskins. Yeah, maybe it's him. It very well could have been. Yeah. Because that was like his stand-in. Well, Bob Hoskins had his own stand-in guy. But they told him to fuck off because he wanted more money, so they just hired some extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he. I guess that's a man, so you can you can be the Mario stand-in. <laughs> um, the the hottest one that happened was uh, Rocky Morton was uh, filming a scene, and he went up to an extra and thought he's like, "Hey, your costume's too nice. We need to dirty it up." So he took some mud and smeared it all over him, but it didn't stick, right? So he then took a cup of coffee that was sitting around for a while, and he told the extra, "Hey, I'm gonna put this on you. Be ready for it." He dumps it on him and it seeps under his rubber mask and burns the fuck out of him. Mm. It was like McDonald's coffee. Oh, yeah. They pump it 180 degrees Celsius. Yep. Uh, They would have shot lists issued and the second and third units would be filming shit that got cut out of the movie. So they're like uh, they spent a ton of money getting this frozen pipe thing done in Brooklyn and it just wasn't needed. Mm-hmm. Nope, completely useless. Threw it right in the dumpster. Yeah. $30,000 thrown away in one day. Yeah, we need you to go film Toads because we're going to do like an illusion, like Bowser, there's going to be a Toad. Koopa. Yeah, and then, well, that's not, no, that's not right. <laughs> um, so a bunch of people got hurt on the set, mm-hmm. like constantly. Uh, they would, all the extras were local hires and they'd be given like random shit to do. And sometimes they would just start getting wild because you're sitting around for nine hours. In the one spot. You can't move. What the fuck are you going to do? Yeah. So they would start putting on little skits in the background and they would just blur it all out in the final movie. Like there was like a guy who got pickpocketed and he chased the other guy and they just oh, took it out. Okay. Uh, Toad cut his hand and then he's the one that peed on the people below him. Or not pee. <laughs> he would he's like bleed. a little monkey. He would bleed on the people below him. Yeah. Uh, one stunt performer, uh, Mario's stunt performer, uh, there's that scene where they're in the garbage truck and they get launched out of it. Uh, the people that um, that were supposed to like do the garbage, so they fall into the garbage bags, right? And they're full of styrofoam and stuff. They didn't pop a hole in them. So what happened is you hit it and you just bounce because it's like falling on balloons. Yeah. So they just bounced eight feet in the air and fucking landed on the concrete. Yeah, the sharp rocks that they had placed nearby for a, for a different shot. Yep. Another one, he got hit with one of those flaming tennis balls covered in oil, which is why they got rid of him because he just got hit with a fireball. Yeah. Um... There, so there's the ice slide, right, where they go down on the mattress. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They did uh, 37 takes for that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's because the Goombas are really heavy. They just fall over and shit. Or uh, they'd hit the icicles going too fast, and the icicles wouldn't break, but the Goomba would be like, Ugh. The Goomba would break, his head would <laughs> pop off. They had to get a new extra. So uh, at one point, they were like, weren't, they weren't happy with it. Like, they broke for lunch. And the people that were like, they were like, man, this sucks. This isn't going fast enough. So they... Uh, they loosened a cable that was pulling it down the pipe, right? They don't test it, and they come back from lunch, and they get on it, and it launches 20 feet through the air. Mm-hmm. And, they're, and they're suspended. It is 25 feet until you hit the ground. And one of the Brooklyn girls wasn't ready for it. So if she wasn't wearing a seatbelt that they CGI'd out, she definitely would have died on mm, set. Yeah, yeah. It would have been just like the Twilight Zone, the movie. 
Uh, another t- another time too, twice in that fucking thing. One, she almost fell off and died. And then the other one, they were going so fast, the mattress got to the end and it fucking flipped over. And they all slammed into the concrete. It's like, it's uh, one of those log rides or whatever. It, it, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It flips over and like, everybody just drowns because they're seat belted. Oh, f- that, I'm terrified of that, Joe. Yeah, yeah. I would want, I would, ugh. <laughs> what, would what would be the funnest ride to die on, do you think, at like a, a, an amusement park? Um, fuck. Um, probably one of those, like the Fahrenheit 901 or whatever from Hershey Park where it just launches you straight up in the air. Oh, okay. You want to, yeah, you just want to feel it coming down. (laughs) Or one of those, um, one of the free drops where you're just like, well, I guess I lose my feet. Um, Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'd like to die on like, uh, oh, maybe like, uh, like, like that cage. Like, you know, like you're in like a big cage, like at the, uh, the fairground ride. Like the zipper ride, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you're so it's I just, just be, you, yeah, I'd be in the cage and I would just hear it like a urp, urp, <laughs> it's breaking and then I just <laughs> smash my brains on the ground. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be the best way to die on, on an amusement park, I think. <laughs> so, the final like two weeks of shooting, the directors just leave. They they they're fired. They quit. They they get out. And the final shots are done by the DP, Sean Semler, right? Uh. <laughs> A week into, uh, so they fired Sean, by the way, mm. and then they replaced him with someone else. Uh, I know I got that. I got he showed that, back I got up in like a mustache. I, I got it flipped up. Wh- whoever the DP was that joined afterward called the previous one. It's like, how do I get fired? This fucking sucks. Yeah. Uh, the editor added in like the ADR that was written in like every scene. Uh, when they told during filming, they noticed this too. They're like, hey, Rocky and Annabelle, we're not getting the shots we're going to need to cut to. Like, this is going to make editing really hard. They told him, what's going to happen? Are the movie police going to get us? <laughs> oh, they might. They got the Razzie police on them. One of the editors said he wished the movie had a giant M fly towards the screen so that he could hide transitions. Just oh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or maybe like a, a star, like, bouncing. Like, boom, boom, bang. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so during the filming, too, the editors were trying to keep up with what they needed. But it's physical film, so they're always a couple days behind. So uh, they would get through. They would finally finish filming something, right? And then the editors would come in two days later and be like, hey, we don't – this scene didn't work. We This, this didn't come through on the, on the film. We need you to do this again. And then they would have to build the fucking sets again and refilm the cocksucker. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, sorry, this uh, 12 minutes of it didn't develop, so you're going to have to <laughs> redo re- it. You're yeah. going to have to re-burn down the house. Ugh. Yeah, so the, the about the only nice things that happened on the set, uh, a lot of the production, like the makeup artists and all them, they won a bunch of awards because they did a really good job, especially with the heat. They made everything work for that. Uh, the MEL people, uh, the whatever, they did the Yoshi, they did the dinosaurs, they did the Koopas. They um, they uh, they went on to do like Marvel and all this big name shit. It was a, like a big start. Yeah, for a pretty bunch much of the same quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, kind of. The animatronics and stuff in this movie are really good. They oh, I meant of the storylines of the movie. Oh yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, pretty yeah, much yeah. the same movie. <laughs> I'd rather give you give you a wrench, Captain America. I'd rather give a baby an AK forty seven. Yeah, you shouldn't have touched the jewel, Iron Man. <laughs> Fuck but, you, <laughs> Thor. Yeah, remember the wash your foreskin, Hulk. <laughs> Why is it green, Hulk? That's yeah. not because of your skin. <laughs> He just got, uh, he got, like, uh, that green ketchup for the Shrek promotion and spilled a little, <laughs> spilled a little on his lap while he was eating his corn God. dogs. What? Uh, well, I'm just describing things. I'm describing the big green penis. It's fine. So, uh, in the end, though, I did enjoy this movie as a weird fucking take on something that is never, ever going to be allowed to happen again. The new Mario Brothers movie that's going to come out is just going to be like Minions. It's going to be a movie for little kids, which is what it should have been from the very start, right? Mm. It probably should have just been, like, a video game like it was. Yeah, yeah. But Hollywood wants it. It should have just stayed a video game. <laughs> um, I think the big, I think there's two things. Two things that really, really killed this. So, Disney coming in and completely changing the script and adding all this stuff just fucking fucked everything up. Because mm-hmm. they were constantly rewriting. If they would have had that other script, it would have been a weird movie, but it wouldn't have been too wild, you know? It would have just been, here's the film. It's an odd, weird, dark Mario movie. Whatever. Right. So Disney coming in and fucking everything up because they wanted to dis- distribute it in their own way and do all that stuff to please their investors. 
which is themselves because Disney's mm-hmm. billion, the billion trillion billion quadrillion dollar company. Mm-hmm. Eventually, they're going to own the moon, and they're going to like carve it into a Disney, like a uh, oh. the, yeah, yeah, the mouse, Mickey the, Mouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the other big thing was that the executive producer from Light Motive, who was supposed to be watching over Allied filmmakers, that was the Morton, you know, Morton Janko and all these people. He was a director himself. So he was approaching this how he would want, as a director, a producer to act towards him, where he's hands off, but is only there every now and then. And Annie, then in the two directors, their pedigree was not as good as his. They did not have a proven track record with this. They did really good commercials, and they did that, that weird sci-fi made-for-TV movie Max Headroom. But besides that, they didn't... If they had a producer that was on their ass the movie would have probably turned out a lot better because it would have been more concise. There was a bunch of really, really talented people. Almost everyone that worked on this had a lot of talent because they were being paid a fucking lot of money. Yeah. But there was no thorough line. Like, there was nothing where people, there's no cohesive anything. They were just doing independently really nice stuff and just slapping it in the movie. Well, I, that's kind of what happens when you hire a dumb director. I mean, that's why the director is so important. That's two why directors, I always harp Two directors, on that. by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that's why I always harp on that. Like, I don't really care, like, who's in the movie or what's the movie, what it's about. I just really care about the director. Yeah. So, um, yeah, me and Joe, what we watched was the work prints, which, for those who don't know, a work print is uh, basically what was in the editing room and they finished it, and they're like, hey, this is our finished editing. It's this the first cut. Have. The first cut. Yeah, the first cut. And then usually the studios go, uh, you need to get this down to 90 minutes so we can have it in more theaters. Mm-hmm. Or you need to cut out this because whatever dumb arbitrary reason. A lot of gore gets cut out because of the MPAA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one, um, this. how long has the War- Mario Bros. work print been out? Uh, maybe a half a year, maybe a year. I was in the work print group whenever it leaked. Okay. Yeah, and that, that was kind of like a lot of people's, like, uh, that was what they were really wanting to see. So, oh, yeah. yeah it, uh, it had been in the hands of some private collectors beforehand, but it finally leaked to the normal collectors. Yeah, the people that are allowed to see it. Mm-hmm, the unwashed masses. <laughs> Who wanted to see their Mario Brothers movie. You were showing me all of your work prints, and you had a lot of really oh, interesting yeah. ones. Yeah, I got you a bunch You had a of Bug's them. Life. Mm-hmm. You had... Um, a movie called Cletus or Clint, where it had a puppy and he had big boots. I don't know why you have that one, Joe. Oh, that's Fluke. It's the work print, but it's a German dub. What is so Fluke about? Or do you just have it because it's a work yeah, print? Yeah, it's a work print. I got it. Okay. Are you going to allow anyone else to see it? No. No, unless you <laughs> give me something in return. <laughs> I'll give you a that's link to... That's a work print culture. I'm sorry. I'll give you a link to my, uh, my gay porn plex. I can already download it. That's not a work print. Does it have the black bar with the with the numbers going through it? Sadly, no. No Sorry, numbers. Nothing I, don't I can like do numbers. for you. <laughs> um, I asked Joe if he knew of any uh, particularly crazy work print people, and I don't know if you were able to find anything. Yeah, well, I mean, so basically the community used to be a lot more open than it is currently now. What happened is the it's uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine in 2009 leaked before mm-hmm. it came out. So basically, like, a bunch of these work print people had it before it was released in theaters, and then it leaked to the public. So then the FBI uh, came in and basically started seizing people's collections. A lot of work prints got destroyed. Ooh. And at that point, the community decided, we're never going to release this to the general public ever again. These people can't have it. I can see that fear, actually. That, that, I can see how that makes a lot of sense, because they probably destroyed a lot of shit that was not dumped on the internet. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah they or did. was, but only in very, very small communities. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, as it works now is you basically you want to amass like a large collection of work prints. I think you have like a list of what you've got and then you can trade for a work print that you want that somebody else has. And when you trade, you don't even lose it, really. You still no, keep no, you, it. Yeah. OK, so you're building a collection of value and it's just like your Plex. Like if your Plex itself. Well, have you done any trades, Joe? Work print trades? No. No, you don't have a, any rare enough ones? No, all the stuff I got is mostly out to the public. For the, if you know where to look, it's. So it's public in that you have to do work to get it, which most people don't want to do. Yep, um, just to see uh, uh, the work print version of this movie, by the way. It was uh, spliced in with a bunch of other stuff. All these cut scenes that made um, the, the Iggy and Spike characters I had their rap, and it had some more establishing shots that made the movie more cohesive and enjoyable yeah. than what it finally was. 
Well, it's a uh, it's a composite edit, so like anything that wasn't work print exclusive is the uh, like you know the DVD of the movie, so it looks decent. Yeah, and then it cuts into like the shitty VHS that was triple dubbed over. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and all the ADR bullshit. Well, I mean, stuff used to leak a lot easier because you you would make like a shit ton of work prints for all these people to see, and then they'd be in an environment where you could easily make more copies of it too. Yeah. So a PA could get his hands on it and like leak it to his buddies if he wanted to. But now, uh, things still leak, but I'm not sure how they do. Do you, do you know how these things leak out? Well, what, what you mean? Like, work prints or, like, the like, stuff? Let's, like, let's say that, um, what's a movie that came out recently? Um, Old Man Logan. Yeah. Old Man Logan. How, how what would the process be for someone who was going to leak that movie? That, that you would want to get a screener. Like, uh, screener time is a good time for leaking. That's whenever, like, they're going to start, uh, submitting shit to, like, awards. They have to send those out on digital copies, like DVDs or Blu-rays or, like, links to, like, a hard drive. Okay. And, like, they're watermarked nowadays, so, like, the person's name is, like, in that. But if they can blur it well enough, and if they think they got all of them, you can leak it with no consequences. Okay. And those are work prints? Those are not work prints. Those are oh. finished. But those are screeners. That's like whenever a movie gets leaked like a couple months before it is ready to be like released. So how do you, um, how would someone, would, would they have to like break into an office or get access to it from a high level where they have the film, they, they're in the editing room and they sneak it out? Is that about the only way that you could get a work print? If, yeah, I mean, I assume you, you're not going to be able to break into the fucking Universal lot and steal a movie for work. No, right? no. I mean, the good thing is if, like, a server is not secured well enough, that's what happened with the recent Nintendo leaks where we got, like, All those hundreds movies. of yeah. gigabytes of, like, uh, ROMs, like, unreleased games, like, a bunch of information, like, decompilations, all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. So, that's how yeah. we got the uh, recent, I think it was just today, they they said that the Ocarina of Time, like, yeah, source decompiled. code had been decompiled, yeah. That's, that's not a leak, that's, like, people, like, painstakingly going through the code oh. and, like, <laughs> making a PC port with it. Okay. Um, but, yeah, uh, what was I guess? I'm trying oh. to think. <laughs> If you don't if you don't have uh, any other wacky work print stories, this is already uh, almost as long as the movie was. Oh, okay. I mean, this I mean, was this yeah. was a this was a lot to put together. I I went through this and I had to like go through it like seven or eight times to fix it up. Uh, a big thing was whenever the Thomas the Tank Engine movie work print got Ooh. leaked. Yeah. Ooh, tell me about this. Was there some some dirty diesels? Yeah. So uh, like basically uh, the movie was censored on release. The there censored. Was, yeah. So originally, well, all the titties, yeah, yeah. No, the trains did not have boobs. The, That's just the in your went, imagination. Nah, nah. And no. then it had, had no, some they interesting did not sounds after that. No, no. What it was was there's a character that was too frightening for the small child child like audience Ooh. at the time. So he was just completely cut out of the film. The main villain. Uh, what well, they probably cut like about ten minutes out of the movie, and basically the tankies have been looking for it for like forever. Uh huh. Uh, and there was a documentary that was being made about, the, like, the movie and the search for this footage. Uh, so somebody at that... So basically, the studio had the work print the whole time. Mm -hmm. But basically, you know, it's like a shitty VHS. They can't really do anything with it commercially, so they're not going to release it to anybody. Uh -huh. But somebody at that company gave it to somebody on that documentary crew. And so they had it. So then, we don't know who it was, but somebody on there leaked it to the public. But then basically, there was a huge tanky outcry... And then, let me see. Why was there a tanky outcry? They got to see it finally. No, the, uh, like, the person who made Thomas said, to the person who has leaked scenes from my film Thomas and the Magic Railroad, <laughs> please take this down now. This action is very hurtful and harmful to my film and all who worked on it and are supporting me now to take action to enable you and everyone else to see the lost scenes that I and many others long to show you. It is harmful to me personally because it is hurting me very much. <laughs> I've waited 20 years to be able to share these scenes I am personally involved with, finding the way to do so. For all the fans, yes, of course, but also for me. It broke my heart when they came out of the film, and you're not helping me to mend it. Please take it down. This also applies to anyone else who has or in is involved with these leaks. <laughs> the person, I guess, it sounds like he might have like had to push really fucking hard for the studio to even let that happen where he could show off the goddamn spooky train yeah. to these people. And then, uh, yeah, these people swoop in and then they, they leak it before it's shown in the documentary or whatever. Yeah. But 
I, well, the, the, that director was trying to push for a director's cut of the movie that come out on like Blu-ray or something like that. Okay, and then they leaked this that just shot that in the foot. So he yeah. okay, so he monetarily stood to lose a loss, a lose a lot now because he's not getting the Blu-rays. <laughs> that too. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's it. All it all stems from those goddamn tankies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're frightening sons, people. Those sons of bitches. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, do you have anything else to say about the the work prints, Joe? Because I'm I am done with the Super Mario Bros. Movie. Oh, okay. It's fun. Okay. It's funny. Uh, watch it. I think you'll enjoy it. Listen to the uh, the best boys that we did on it, where we were pretending to be absolutely fucking Midwest normal on mushrooms. Mm. I wasn't all that high. I mean, I can handle my stuff. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, then why did you get hit with the laffy taffy? Because you threw it. I think you... this is over. Mm. Uh, Joe Buckley, where can they find you? You can find me on The Man With No Brain. Yeah, I am The Man With No Brain. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ryan Matthew Ziegler, co-host, he's dissecting my empty skull to try to figure out what he's makes He's dissexual. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and if you don't want to listen to that, you can check me out on Malevolent Movies. It's a uh, kind of mystery science theater 3000 kind of riff on bad indie horror movies. Yep, they're, uh, they're very enjoyable. They cover some movies that no one else has ever bothered no one else has, has ever reviewed virus shark mm-hmm. flew birds yep well a lot of sick animals in these films i've noticed yeah. and so uh thank you very much for listening um i enjoy all of you uh you're my you're my wonderful little, little let me tell you about ease as we as i refer to them in their community you're my little kittens no yeah. stop it Come Joe here. Buckley, I know. He's going to start doing the baby sit. voice. No, I'm not going to do the baby no, voice. No, he's going to start doing sit. the baby voice. No, Goodbye, everyone, lap, and I hope you have a nice day. Sit on Goodbye. daddy's lap. Sit you on daddy's find... lap. Stop it. Sit on my lap. Stop sit it. On my I'm put holding your, my put, hands over his mouth. Put your hole in my lap. Put it on my lap. Shut up, Joe. No, You can find the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Facebook, too. Uh, and there's a Twitter, which is Let Me Tell You PD. There's a Discord in the description, Patreon in the description. <laughs> um, emails, let me tell you about ta 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 at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. We're going to do more of the Google reviews soon. They're oh, going to be yeah. very fun. Yeah, give me a kiss, kittens. Ugh, <laughs> I'm going to announce when we do that so that people can actually schedule it to show up. Okay, I'm going to stop before Joe gets more unruly. I'm Goodbye. not trying to groom anyone. I'm Goodbye. not trying to groom. Joe is never grooming. I've never groomed myself once. All right, I've goodbye. Never done that. I'm done. So mm-hmm. long. Well, that's fine, I guess.